Uh, Eric, uh, Jay just spoke to us about adjustments, how uh, the Celtics played um, Kemba Walker on him, and he still wound up with all 10 of his shots, Jay being three-pointers. And he said, you guys have discussed sort of adjustments. What's that chess match like? And, and was there any thought when, when you saw Kemba on Jay in that game to maybe changing his role, or is it typical to what you say, you do what you do? I just have to do things with uh, more intention. Uh, like we talked about, uh, this is high level competition. There uh, will be uh, intense moments. There'll be moments where you, you really have to combine uh, the competitive uh, intensity along with thought. Um, and and that's what you want out of this. This is, uh, it's not supposed to be easy and, and you're supposed to get tested uh, your game and, and see if you can take it to a different level. On adjustments with a three day break, does it maybe make it a little bit easier to sort of go through as opposed to it was a typical every other type situation? Thank you. Either way, you have to deal with whatever uh, presents itself in terms of the schedule. Um, so we're trying to take advantage of this, get guys uh, that need a little bit of rest, guys that need work, uh, and see if we can also continue to uh, prepare. Tim Reynolds? I know you're certainly we're not thrilled with the outcome the other night, it goes without saying. But in a weird way, the sickness of coaches that you often speak of, does this help maybe generate an edge that you know you will need? The deeper as you go into this, if you if you do make it deeper into this, is I mean, can can not executing what you wanted to Saturday can in a weird way can that sort of help? Uh, look, it's um, there's two teams competing against each other. Um, so as much as you want to say, hey, it's just about us, and we just have to do X, Y, and Z, us the Celtics have something to say about that. Likewise, when they're doing whatever they're trying to do, we have something to say uh, about that. And, both teams are, are getting challenged and tested uh, the way the way you should be in a, in a conference finals. Um, and if we're not on top of our game um, in all those different areas, uh, force, physicality, uh, detail, uh, focus, uh, you know, it can turn on. Indiana can turn pretty quickly like it did the other night. Anthony Chang. Hey, Spo. Duncan in game three, pick up those three quick fouls in the first half on, I think, defending post-ups. What, what did you like about the adjustment he made in that second half? It seemed like he was denying the pass, but I think he even drew a charge um, yeah. in the game as well. What, what did you like about the adjustment he made there in that second you half? Know, he just has to do things uh, with force and detail. It's not the first time that he's been posted up. It's not the first time that teams are going to try to attack him off the dribble, pull him up into a screen. Uh, all the different ways, you know, he's gotten much better at it, um, you know, through countless reputi rep uh, repetitions and, and game experiences, he, uh, he competes, uh, he takes it to heart of, of doing his job and, and he works to, to get better. Uh, and you saw that from one half to, a, to another. Was, was everybody able to practice today? Uh, everybody was able, it wasn't uh, like a full practice. Everybody participated. Okay. Thank you. Rebecca Harlow. Um, coach, yeah, just a couple for you, but paint this team has been so effective at defending it in the regular season and also in the playoffs. And then obviously I know you're not happy with how yeah. that went down the other night. I know you're not going to tip your hand on what you need to change specifically, but just can you speak to me on the importance of getting back to heat defense there? Yeah, that, uh, that goes without saying. Um, you can see that formula. Uh, it doesn't take a rock scientist to figure that out, but that ain't gonna work. Um, but again, it's competition. Uh, they had something to say about that and they came out um, uh, with great force off the dribble. Um, you know, they were they were driving and attacking in a lot of different uh, situations and we did not handle that well. Um, we have to do a better job with that. And with Goron, he's been he was so effective shooting wise in the first two games, Marcus Smart gave him some problems the other night. How important is it to make sure that you get him into a position where he's got the ball when and where he wants it? Yeah, well, we, you know, I have to do my job uh, to get him uh, comfortable and get him places where he uh, can be his best version. Um, Gorn is uh, 
as decorated and as experienced uh, as any player in this league uh, in terms of big games, playoff games, international playoff games. Uh, he knows that not every game is going to go your way, uh, but it's competition and, and you, you work to have a, a better one the next time. Mark Spears. Coach, uh, talk about uh, what it meant to you or what led to Bam uh, developing into an all-star and doesn't seem like he's even changed much as a person since he's he's gotten that appointment. No, Bam is is so genuine, uh, authentic. He's real. Um, he has a great competitive humility a, a, about him, where he is a totally different personality in between the lines. <laughs> I, he's a, as fierce and nasty as anyone uh, in this league. And you get him outside those lines, he's been raised the right way. His mother, uh, a big deal to do with that. Um, she raised a, a fine young gentleman. He's one of the best competitors on this planet. Um, uh, and he just continues to get better um, because he works at it uh, and uh, he doesn't get comfortable um, or thinking that uh, that he doesn't need to, to work to get to a higher level. And I remember on draft night, I actually seen him sitting in the stands. I don't know if you remember that. And I, I think he was in the stands. Maybe I was wrong. But he, he seemed, um, for him to go 14, it was like, like not as heralded as he would if they would have redraft now. What were your thoughts about him on draft night? He was the guy we wanted to take. Um, we were just hoping that he was going to be there. Uh, you know, he always talks about the guys that he's played with um, previously in, in AAU basketball. Yeah. Bam Adebayo is the anti-AAU player. I got to look up those records. I, I don't think he played AAU because he's, he's wired differently, which we like. Cooper Moorhead? I just about another one on Bam. Um, you know, taking into consideration his massive role uh, on the offense, the smaller Boston plays and the more they switch, does that tilt the scales of what's required of him in any way? Oh, we definitely have to do more. Um, but they're a really talented team, and they're well coached. Uh, you got to be on top of it, just like they have to be on top of it with us. Um, and yeah, we can expect a lot of different lineups and a lot of lineups with, with great skill. Um, that's the way they played a, a, a lot during the season when they had their full complement. Um, and, you know, ultimately this is what you want. You want them to be at full strength, um, playing great basketball uh, and to see if you can play better basketball. That's the whole idea of this. Ethan Skolnick. Eric, obviously you're very familiar with Gordon's game, um, you know, going, going back to the recruitment of him a couple of years ago. Uh, how close, obviously he did, he, did, he did make an impact in the last game and, and in a lot of different ways. How close is he in your view uh, to, to even the player he was, you know, prior to this particular injury? Yeah, I don't even know if that is relevant. He's a player. Like he's, he knows he's, he's got a – He's been a number one guy uh, before, and um, he can make plays and make the right basketball reads and plays. Uh, we want him, even as competitors, to be out there. Um, we are going to get tested, and and. You have to find a way to overcome it against a good team and good players. Hey, Eric, one more quick thing. Um, Jay said that with Jimmy, you can't really tell if he's going to be at his most intense because he's so quiet before games. He's listening yeah. to music. He's, as he said, kind of a man of action. Uh, can you tell as a coach now, having coached him for almost a year, uh, if you're going to get the sort of the intense Jimmy or the sort of off the charts intense Jimmy from the start of the game? He's, he's going to be intense, uh, Jimmy, uh, every, every time he steps on uh, in between the lines. And 
we've had several practices that no one saw here in the bubble that he was he was uh, again that guy <laughs> just a skirmish and pushing yelling all of the all the stuff that we love um but this is this is competition ethan i know i keep on saying it um they're going to bring what they bring. We're going to bring what we bring, and 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 sometimes you're going to find a way to get the best of them. But they have something to say about it. And sometimes they're going to get the best of, of us, and they got the best of us, you know, last game, and they deserved it. And we're moving on to the next the next one. All right, Spo. Thanks for your time. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thanks, Spo.